All right, everyone, apologies for the extremely low 40, 480 resolution here. I have absolutely no choice. My webcam refuses to cooperate on its normal 720 settings, so uh, there it is. Uh, I've actually made this video five times now because of technical difficulties. I'm a little bit upset this morning. Uh, we got to talk about Pompeo's meeting with North Korea uh, and what's happened there. His meeting has been delayed. Uh, they've postponed it. They've said, well, North Korea hasn't made enough denuclearization progress. I'm sitting there thinking, why are we so fixated on denuclearization when the alternative is, hey, why don't we instead push for a formal peace treaty so that we no longer have to worry because North Korea is no longer specifically an adversary? If North Korea is no longer on a war footing with its neighbor, with South Korea, which is backed by the U.S. and or by the U.S. itself, uh, if it's no longer on that war footing, then they can denuclearize potentially without the stress of worrying about being attacked because there's no longer a reason for the United States to attack. Why aren't we moving towards that and sending Pompeo over to say, hey, hey, Kim, uh, hey, Moon, why don't we just sign a three-way treaty here to end formal hostilities and begin, you know, ripping the, we can get rid of the fucking landmines, that's the worst part. You know, people are going to be, if you have peace right now, a hundred years from now, little Korean kids are still going to be occasionally stepping on landmines. This happens already. They get washed down the rivers during floods sometimes, and uh, end up blowing up someone's fishing boat. It's fucking crazy. It must be nightmarish to like, think, hey, I'm gonna go to the beach. I might die, so you know, here's here's my life insurance policy to go bathing. Uh, it must be kind of funny, but that's what we should be moving towards. I don't see any reason why we should have any animus towards North Korea. I understand the leadership is like, yes, okay, Kim Jong Un's a dictator, uh, not a pleasant person grinds his own people down and is, is, you know, a little bit wacky. There are plenty of other regimes in the world that operate in that fashion. You think of maybe Saudi Arabia, that we have totally normalized relations. And look, Saudi Arabia, an actual potential regional threat, co-owns all of Pakistan's nuclear arsenal that it developed <laughs> illegally, technically speaking, has a huge economy, a lot of manpower, and isn't under any form of sanctions, and can throttle our energy resources partially at any given time. Nobody's saying that we should be on a constant nuclear war footing, Cold War binge against the Saudi Arabians. So why the fuck do we worry so much about North Korea? I'll tell you what worries me. What worries me is if peace doesn't break out in the next 10 years or something. North Korea is going to say, to hell with you. And what it'll do is very simple. Here's what North Korea can do if it really wants to do whatever it wants to do with South Korea without the U.S. getting involved. Especially if it waits for a liberal president who won't have the balls to intervene. Take those hydrogen bombs and put them on your submarines. Put them offshore some major uh, cities like you'd think Tokyo or San Francisco, Shanghai, you know, places like that, Honolulu. And then say, hey, we're invading South Korea. We've got some uh, dozens of hydrogen bombs offshore in various cities around the Pacific. We're going to detonate them if you get involved, so fucking stay out of our way and get your troops out of South Korea. Otherwise, they're going to die too, and we're not going to apologize for it. They will then pound everything within 20 miles of the border with artillery and missiles, invade, then do it again once they move their pieces forward, and there's nothing South Korea is going to be able to do to stop them. South Korea has got a much better air defense and a much more refined navy, but it is sorely outnumbered in terms of the total number of naval vessels for the most part. Those submarines could take out any of South Korea's main naval bases anyway, or a U.S. carrier group. Look, you know, they did tests uh, back in the day, back in the 1960s, with regards to what would happen uh, if nuclear weapons were deployed against a modern naval fleet. They took some of their old World War II uh, craft and they put them out there in one of those atolls and blew up a hydrogen bomb. Miraculously, most of those ships stayed afloat. They're, they're remarkably well uh, built. The problem is everyone inside would have died. You know why? <laughs> because it turned the ship into a giant microwave. It would have killed everyone aboard. And then weeks later, off the shore of Taiwan, you would have found a U.S. carrier. Oh, yeah, it's still intact. Wow, it survived the nuclear holocaust. Oh, yeah, everyone aboard is, is like bleached bone mode. Hell, they're, so, they're shining like fucking SpongeBob when he got sun bleached. That's what would end up happening. It'd be a massacre, actually, and we'd probably lose most of our naval capabilities in the Pacific if that were to happen. I think that would be a little bit of a problem. And then the only response would be we'd have to nuke Pyongyang. I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see anybody get nuked. Uh, so I think we should be moving towards a formal peace agreement. After that, denuclearization naturally follows. Look, their nuclear program is predicated on either taking over Korea or dissuading others from taking them over. 
It's a very, it's a, it's a joint posturing, both offensive potentially and defensive in a more pragmatic sense. That's why they wanted the the H bomb. It's more of a deterrent than the primitive, you know, Nagasaki-sized weapons they were using before. We're talking about selling on the 50 to 100 kiloton range, not something in the 10 to 20 kiloton range. Significant improvement. By the way, their older weapons would have had a blast radius so small it would have been ineffective if you put it on a sub and idled it off the coast of Honolulu or Tokyo. You'd have to sail it up a canal in order for it to be of any use at all, and even then it wouldn't be as much of an effect as you want, because usually the idea is you, you detonate your explosive above the city. That increases the blast radius, it increases the overall damage. Uh, and, and then the fallout goes further. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see a peace agreement. Fuck denuclearization for right now. I understand the U.S. government's like, well... They haven't declared their stockpile. They were supposed to make progress on denuclearization. All this other stuff technically is symbolic. Yes, it is. Symbolism's more important in the region than pragmatism in that way. And we've seen this. Trump knows this, by the way. It's obvious that he does. It's like when they insulted Pence and he threatened not to have his meeting with Kim Jong-un. He made exactly the right decision. My hope is that this is just another maneuver, basically putting pressure on them and saying, look, continue the denuclearization process or we pull back and that we start the whole thing over again, hoping that because China's involved now, it'll put more pressure on Kim Jong-un. The problem is that at some point, we're going to be unable to have uh, really a reason to put more pressure on. We might be seen as actually bullying the North Korean regime at some point. I know that sounds strange to anyone who's maybe in the West, but it could be seen that way by China, and China's the other main player in the region. We're winning in our trade war with China. That's great. We're putting pressure on them, too. At some point, though, we've got to have some good faith involved with a regime that has taken measurable steps, at least symbolically and on the ground in a non-nuclear sense, towards de-escalating the peninsula. At some point, that has to be done. My hope is still for peace. Uh, the problem is when you pull back Pompeo for the third time, uh, it makes it look like it's a more remote chance than it should otherwise, I think, be. That's about all. Peace out.